Ethers will have substitution reactions very similar to the alcohols. In fact, the alkoxide, or OR leaving group, is very similar to a hydroxyl, or OH leaving group. Both of these are poor leaving groups because they're strong bases. However, as with alcohols, if we first protonate the ether, then we can have successful substitution reactions. If the oxygen in the ether is bonded to a secondary or tertiary carbon, then the ether will follow the typical SN1 mechanism for the substitution reaction. As with alcohols, we will use a hydrogen halide and heat, whereas for a primary it, these will follow SN2 mechanisms. In primary ether substitutions, the nucleophile will attack the less sterically hindered carbon in the group. Another important note is that the products formed in these reactions will include an alcohol and an alkyl halide. If sufficient hydrogen halide is present, the alcohol formed will also undergo substitution to form a second alkyl halide. In this first example, we have an ether in which the oxygen is bonded to two primary carbons. Once the oxygen in the ether is protonated, it will follow an SN2 mechanism and the nucleophile, in this case the iodide, will attack the least sterically hindered carbon or the carbon that has the fewer substituents nearby. This will form ethyl iodide and the remaining part of the molecule will be turned into an alcohol. In the second example, we have a cyclic ether and one of the carbons bonded to the oxygen is a tertiary carbon. Since one of the carbons is tertiary, this ether will follow an SN1 mechanism. Once the ether is protonated, the nucleophile, the I-, will attack the tertiary carbocation so that the nucleophile iodide will be added to that tertiary carbon. The oxygen, on the other hand, will end up being protonated. Since this was a single cyclic ether, we end up with only the one molecule that now has both a halogen substituent and an alcohol functional group.